morning, everybody. Welcome to Working with Horses of the Gym. I've got a guest today, I guess. This is Leo Snyder. Hi there. Now, Leo is um, a bit of a fabricator, I guess you could say. And he's actually made up some PVs and cant hooks that are very unique. And I wanna, we wanna talk about that. But before we talk about it, he had texted me the other day and said he's got a tool that he and his father and mother the whole family used and in the woods now i thought i was pretty knowledgeable about what's you know woods tools and i've been doing this for a long time and it's obviously an old old woods tool so he brought it over this morning showed it to me and says i have no idea what it is so i'm gonna do i'm gonna show you this tool and i'm gonna kind of do what i did in my one of my last videos um i want you to Guess what this tool is. So, after we after I stop, after I show you this tool, I want you to, if you want to play this game, I guess you could call it, call it that. I want you to shut the stop the video and put your answer in the comment. Just out of curiosity, we'll see how many people know this tool. Boy, it's a beautiful day. <clears throat> okay, I'll just ex explain it as far as I know about it, and then afterwards you can explain what you know about. Okay, here's the tool. Now, I'm gonna to try to explain what it looks like to me, type of thing, and then Leo will explain at the end of the video what exactly it is and what it's used for. So it's about two and a half, three feet long. Um, it does have a point, but it's on kind of the back side of it. And I'm thinking it must have something to do with pulling, but I, you can't pull much with just a straight handle like this. And Oh, I'm starting to get it now. There is a sharp edge. This is a fairly sharp edge. I still really don't know for sure what that would be used for. So anyways, there's the tool. I want whoever wants it to take a guess as to what this tool is. I'm assuming we're gonna get some, some correct answers. But as of right now, I do not know what that is. So, like I said, stop the video and take your guesses just for fun and we'll see who can answer this question. So I'm gonna set this right down. Now, Leo was here a few weeks ago and we were talking about cant hooks and he had a, something that he was doing with cant hooks. Um, now I say cant hooks, it's actually more the handle, not the cant hook or PV itself. Right. I want to explain the difference of the cant hook and PVs, um, but before I do that, why don't you explain what you're doing? Now, Leo might be selling these, this product, um, so if he, if, now you're going to give me your email address? Email? Yes, I am. So Leo, will, we'll have his email address in the description below. So you might contact him if you're interested in purchasing, purchasing a can't hook or a PV. But I'm going to let you talk and explain what exactly you've been doing. Okay, what this is, is a PV that I bought, but this wood shaft came all the way up here like this straight and you it was hard to grip the thing was this big around and i said there's i got to be able to fix this so i grabbed up a baseball bat and i cut the end off a baseball bat aluminum right, alumi right? aluminum baseball bat and then i put the wood handle from the pv and the, the other one the can't hook i put I stripped out all the steel and I put the wood onto my wood lathe and I lathe this handle to this shape. It goes all the way up into about here. So it's very solid. And these aluminum baseball bats, as I found out, if you're a mechanic, they work great for cheater bars on your uh, breaker bars for sockets. These will not bend. I've had two guys on, myself and another guy, on one of these baseball bats, and they're almost impossible to really? bend. So, with this wood going all the way up inside here, supporting this, it's really... Almost indestructible. Almost. And stuff. So anyways, that's what I did. And uh, I was thinking, Jim, um, I have did some research on getting used baseball bats for this purpose because I like to repurpose things. Yes. 
and it's kind of hard to get a hold of them. And so what I thought is if somebody had a broken cant hook or PV that they needed to replace the handle in, um, they could email me and um, we would see about getting a hold of their parts and I get a hold of a baseball bat. So Leo actually told me later that the availability of the baseball bats was so hard to find that you might have to supply your own baseball bat if you want him to change your handle on your can hook or on your PB. And I can certainly turn all the wood. I can make a new handle, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where I think I'm at with that. Okay. Yeah. I think it's a great idea. So you guys that are extra strong, that's not me, but people like Levi, our son, he's broken more can hooks than I can remember when he was home. Um, so for you guys, this might be a way to go. Um, and it's so nice because the size of it, it's just, it's just a one-handed thing up here. And then when you use the can hook, it's just so nice and handy to handle. So, And, and the thing about the way this is, is your weight is down here, but up here you can fly this thing around. Right. And the other thing that I mentioned to you once before was that I see your wife and your daughters helping you. Yeah. And you mentioned sometimes they do on the sawmill. Yeah. And one of the things I, I like about this is because it a small a smaller hand can grip this really right. well. Right. You know, right. And you get and then of course you got the knob so it ain't, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. So so this can't hook is going to go into my logging cart, which I already have another can't hook there. And he has agreed to that can't hook is actually broken. You could see where it's taped up right here. Um so he's actually agreed to um swap can't hooks for me and I'll pay the difference on this one. And he's gonna take that one back and fix it up for somebody else. Is that correct? Yes. So I'll pay the difference for having this nice one and he can take my poor one and he can do with that whatever he wants. One other thing I want to share about this cart, but I'm going to share it in just a minute. Let's go back around to my other logging cart where the camp yeah, hook no. is and we'll put them side by side. So this is the camp hook and I have it in this particular cart. This is the cart that Andy's been using. Um, and there's a reason for that. Um, I basically, I just happen to have a spot that this fits nice. Whereas in my other car, I have a spot that fits nice also, but this will not work in it. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. So here's the other can hook. Or this is the can hook and that's the PV. And you'll see that the handles were done the same way. And he lays the wood down before he slid this on, correct? Yep. Okay. So while Leo is holding these two, I want to try to explain the difference between a can hook and a PV. So, I should have made a contest out of this also. But this is the can hook. This is, that's just the way can hook's made. The PV, basically the only thing different is it has a point like that. Now, I really like this when I'm in the woods because if I want to slide a log over, I'll use this PV and drive it like that and push it. That would do the same thing somewhat, but this just gives you so much more leverage because you have a point out here to shove underneath the log. Generally speaking, it's made to go this way, and we might as well go into the sawmill even and show how that's done. Any, what were you going to say? Now, the other, the other thing that, the other part of the, the PV, one of the reasons that the PV has a point, <clears throat> excuse me, is in 1850 or thereabouts, a guy named Joseph Peavy of Maine created this to improve on that. So the can hook came first. The can hook came first. And then the PV came first. I'm glad you're talking because I, I didn't know that. Yep. And the reason for the point is a lot of times a log will be not square to where you want it. And if you got two guys, one over there with with this PV, I'm over here with my PV, and I want to move this log, I can drive this in, and here's the log over here. But his end is over there. 
I can hold this and he can roll the log and bring it square with where you want. I know exactly what you mean. When I first started logging years and years ago, we used a scoop. So we would take our, it was two guys generally, and exactly the same way. We'd be rolling the log up onto the scoop and had a set of two poles here for, for a ramp. And as you're rolling along, all logs have a taper. And so if you're just rolling it, the big end will go faster than the small end. So what he just explained is exactly what we used to do all the time. And I'm sure it's still done today quite often to keep that log going straight. Now, one more thing, Joseph Peavy, he was a blacksmith and he started the Peavy company. Mm -hmm. And he, the Peavy company is still in business today. Oh really, same one, same the company. The same company is up in Maine. Really? Yep. I didn't know that either. So if so, do they make can't hook sauce or just PVs? No, they make both. They make both. They, yeah. ma they make both, and um, I know this only because I just researched it. Yeah, well, that's uh, good you did because I didn't know that stuff. <laughs> I didn't know it either. I thought it was just, but I always thought it was just because you're PVing the log. Okay. You know, but it's but his actual name. It's an act, Joseph PV. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And uh, they're still in business today. My name would be Can't Hook because half the time I just can't hook it. <laughs> well, do you know why why they call it a Can't Hook? Nope, I don't know that either. The Can't Hook was na so named because when you put a log across the sawmill and you when you square it, now it's not a log, it's a can't. And that's, that's why they call it a Can't Hook. Well, that's really interesting. Now the other part... This is something you all knew, right Brenda? No, I mean, I know what a cant is, but. Okay, and the other part of that is, the reason they use a cant hook uh, around a sawmill is because this flat end is better. It won't mark up so much the, the cant. Okay, right, you know? right. Yeah, yeah. and once you, once you square a log, you don't really want a lot of marks on right, it. Right, exactly. You know? exactly. And that's, that's the reason for yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So and in the sawmill, I will actually use the can hook all the time, and I never use the PV. But when I'm logging, I prefer the PV. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yep. Let's go in the sawmill and quick show this. There's people out there that never seen these and don't even understand right. how they work. Right. So let's go in there and, and roll a couple logs just so people okay. can see that. You you have uh, you you got some fresh logs in there then? Not fresh, but well, I mean with bark on. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay, well we we will need the tool. Oh really? Oh really? Oh my goodness. Okay, Brenda, can you go that way? Grab yeah, the tool I'll, and turn and turn the lights on too yeah. as you're coming in. It's freezing out. Okay, is it look fairly good? Everything's good. Okay, so here's just a collection of some of the PVs and can hooks I have here. Um, so these three here are all cant hooks and those two are PVs. And these are the, this one here and this one here is the ones I've been using in the, in the sawmill. This is an extra long one for those extra big logs. I cringe when I, years ago when Levi was going to handle these big logs because I said, that's not gonna take it. That's not gonna take it. It's gonna break, but it's still going. Um, so uh, yeah, this is quite a collection right there to give you an idea. And so now we're going to show and explain how they work. And one thing, <clears throat> Jim, I want to point out. When I talk about repurposing, now this is a baseball bat. And you see these dents on here? These dents are actually when a kid or somebody was using this as a baseball, every one of these dents are from a somebody hitting a baseball you were telling me that that you also had said this was actually a kid's baseball this, I, I, yeah I, I believe that was a kid's baseball. so I, i'm guessing his his dad Parents. borrowed it once in a while <laughs> to make these dents in it yeah maybe he's a major leaguer <laughs> <laughs> maybe okay so ah. okay is this one good and sharp yeah it's yeah because this one is not. Yeah, this one, I sharpened this one, actually. <laughs> how about this one? Do you know how this one is? I, I don't know. Okay. When you say sharpen, this is where good. do you sharpen <clears throat> that, that point on both points or just that? No, nope, just this point here. Okay. And what I like to do is I sharpen the top and only flat file the bottom just a little bit so that I can get a nice point right here some bark doesn't like to be driven into. Yeah. Well, so yeah. So here's, this is, some of these hooks 
could be on either a um, can hook or a PV, but just here's a difference between the, the hooks. There's, there's several different kinds out there. This is straight across, that's a point. <clears throat> so, anyways, um, so we are going to steer this log, are we? I don't know, let's. We can, we can, let me get these two out of the way, we'll just deal with it one log. <clears throat> Okay, we'll do it here. Okay. Okay. Um, come right here, Brenda. Now let me just, I'll do this one and you do that one. Because it's just a one person job. What's that? I can't get like both of you. That's right. Just point to me first and then point to him for his okay. next one. Okay. So here's the kayak. This is what I've been using here in the mill all along. And so it's a very simple process. You kind of let it lay there. And I kind of like to give it a quick snap like that. And that kind of sinks that hook in. And then you roll it like that. It's very simple. It's not as simple as it looks. Okay. You use your, your PV and show how that works. Okay, and any, first, any, any tricks maybe that you've learned over the years. First of all, uh, when I use a, a PV or a can hook, I like to grab it like this and drive it in. Don't show it any mercy. Now you can see how far that went in there. Okay. And then I've got all the pressure I want right there. I know it's not going to slip. So when I when I use a, a can hook or a PV, I'm serious about it. You drive it. Yeah. Yeah. That's longer than that, so it would make it harder. I mean, What's it's longer? Harder. It seems like this thing right here. The maybe hook? It's not, yeah, the hook. Well, well the same. Yeah, they do make these hooks. No, nope, I'm wrong. Pretty well but, the same. But if you look at uh, if you look at the PV company uh, order sheet or whatever, they do have longer hooks. Longer hooks. That one from that long can't hook seems a little longer, doesn't it? Looks like it. But I was surprised to see that, and they said, um... It's definitely, it's yeah. shaped differently, too. Shaped a little different, but yeah. It, it, yeah. And uh, That's always been a good one, of course. And there again, that's a long one, so that's more based on a bigger log. Oh, yeah. Whereas the short ones are more based on the smaller exactly. diameter logs. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I was surprised to see <laughs> on their sheet these hooks are can be a quite a difference in, oh, yeah. in the in the length of the shaft. Yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of a uh, introductory example of how these are used. So now this tool that Leo brought up, he says it has something to do with what's going on right in here. So I'm going to get that for him and let him explain. What in the world this tool is for? Okay, so this tool was my parents' tool. And where my father got this, I have no idea. But back in the 50s, 60s, way up into like the 70s, um, pulpwood that we sent to Cornwall, Canada to the paper mill. That would have been a hardwood pulpwood, correct? Uh, both. Oh, both, okay. Both. Um, Mostly hardwood, but yeah, we sent we sent everything over there uh, at different times. They would yeah. you would sign a contract for different kinds of wood, and um, so anyways, back then when we were cutting the four foot pulp wood for the paper mill in the spring of the year, at a certain time, they wanted peeled poplar. Ah, I know what it is now, and. We had to go in the woods. When the sap is first starting to run, popple will peel real easy. And this is the way you use this tool. What you would do. This is on a four foot piece generally? On a four, well, no, you would, you would peel the whole log. Before the, you cut it? Yeah, the okay. whole tree. Right in the woods? Right in the woods. Okay. And what you would do is you would drive that in the bark and you'd rip down through and that bark would split open and you would go this way and this way and this way and this way and you'd peel that bark off in the spring of the year it peels very easy this is a piece of red pine which will not peel very good even in the spring no, compared no. to a lot of other woods and it surely doesn't peel good now so it's a kind of a bad time to demonstrate that but that's really interesting but but that was your action you drive it in, you rip it. it down, and then you would 
walk up the log. Now, when you came to a knot in it, would you it would, go you over would, it fairly you, good? You would, you would go around the knot. Okay. And if you notice this curve here, yeah, this curve is not from using it. This curve is purposely so it will go slide around the log. Okay. Yeah. Like this here. Yep. And that's that's what that curve is for. And Jim, <clears throat> as old as this tool is, I still use this on my sawmill today. To get rid of dirty bark. Dirty bark. And the other thing is, when something happens to a blade as I'm sawing through, and I gotta back that blade up, I can drive Spy that in. And lift up. And I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's very interesting. Now, now I've I can't remember if my father back of course back in Vermont. I can't remember ever hearing him peeling pulp, but I think he probably did, but I never heard much about it. And I've certainly have never done it. I know in other parts of the country, they do a lot of peeling in popple. Okay. Uh, now, of course, this is our popple, which is really Aspen, Yeah. Um, which gets confusing because there's a popple in Pennsylvania that's a really nice quality hardwood and we don't have that. Yeah. But that's very interesting. Yeah, we peeled popple and we peeled one other thing and I'm not sure, I can't remember what it was. Okay. But uh, mostly the popple. Okay. And How old were you when you were doing this? Um, let's see, I would have been about 10, 11, okay. 9, okay. you know, yeah, pretty young. Yeah. But back then we all worked in the woods. Yeah. You know, Yeah. everybody had their axe, Every you know, even, even a kid, we had our oh, axe, yeah. we had our, yeah. you know, we had our hatchet. Yeah. That's very interesting. We'd come in at night and after supper, the old uh, whetstone, the, the, the millstone, yeah. the sandstone, we'd sit there and crank the handle. So my father would take your axe yeah. and he'd sit there and sharpen the your same axe. Same with this, I'm sure. He would yeah. sharpen that off yeah. of it. So. Yeah. yeah. You know, anything that needed to be sharpened like yeah. that, he'd sit there and that wheel would be turning and he'd sit there. That's and really neat. He'd have a little motion. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Thank you so much for bringing this stuff up and, and sharing your knowledge. A lot of this stuff I just never knew. I want to show you one other thing. Um, I had told you that the can hook that I got from you really works good in that other cart. But I want to share why my PVs, why I have to have a PV in my other car. It's just a simple reason, but I'm going to show you why. Is there a name for that piece of? Equipment? You know, I don't. Spud. Oh, spud. Uh, yes, That's a spud. It, yes, it's a spud. You're right. Yeah. I couldn't think. I just out of sight. It just yep, came to me. It spud. Is, it's a yes. pulp. It's a it's a pulp spud. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So I guess I win the prize, right? You win the prize. <laughs> hey, you know what we're going to give you? <laughs> what? We're, a brand new gym t-shirt. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're going to give you a gym's t-shirt for, for, for helping us in this video. That's what we're going to do. Okay, let's get one more segment here on the cart. So, yeah. Yeah, I've been trying to think what the, what we called it, but you're right. It's a spud. But, uh, just all of a sudden came yep. It's funny. Okay, so on my logging cart, like I, like I said, I like, to, I like to use the PV in the woods anyways, but I, I don't have a lot of carts have an actual spot for for pvs or can hooks but for myself whoops this is the wrong one just like <laughs> it's a little warmer out here how is it you can it with the full clothes you got on it's oh it's a beautiful day for me oh my word it's freezing yeah i mean it is a beautiful day but i got like layers upon layers maybe you do too but you know no, not and much not. you know yeah crazy <laughs> <laughs> I would rather have the cold than I would the heat of the summer. Yeah. Yeah. You're one yeah. of those guys that can't sta stand the heat and sweat yeah. like yeah. sweat like However, I have done my a lot of work down in uh, Arizona where it's 130 degrees in the shade. Yeah. You know. Okay. So, um, like I had said, I like to use the, the PV on my cart because for woods work, it's actually the best to use, although I really don't use it that much because the way i log nowadays i just don't have a lot of need for it but it's so nice to have just in case so my pv will slide in here and the way my cart is set up if i slide it right in like this it will sit in there against that angle iron right there and it rides really nice i have probably broken over the years more pvs because i've and not even touched them than i have while actually operating them 
The cart is a really nice place to have a PV, but I flipped this cart over so many times, I've actually smashed them by turning the cart over. Wow. So that's an issue, and you'll see even now, this is all taped up because I got a big crack in it. So Leah was taking Leo was taking this one back to fix up for the next person that needs a, a PV. And I'm gonna make up the difference to pay him on this PV. And this is gonna go right in here. Now the beauty about this is this car stays outside almost all the time. Right at the moment, I'm actually putting it inside on this job I'm working on, but it's outside. So it's wood and wood will rot. So that's an issue with a wooden can hook. That's not gonna be an issue with this. That slides right in there, perfect. Not only that, I'm really excited because, just come right over here, Brendan. Anyway. The way this is set up, that can hook at this spot is a lot bigger diameter. And so this link right here, this slot where I have a chain, always caused me trouble because it hits that, the wooden part of that can hook, or that PV. And this one will work so much better. So that's perfect. I still have my handle when I'm climbing off this cart. I'm always using this as a handle, and uh, yeah, I'm very pleased. I think that's going to work really good. It's going to change your life. Oh my, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I thank you very much for coming over and helping us with this video. Your knowledge was incredible because I didn't show me those things I'd never heard of, so that's great. And for showing us the spud and uh, explaining how that worked. I never knew how that worked. You know, I've seen pictures, I've yep. seen guys uh, in, in, in uh, magazines use them, but I've never actually seen yep. how it actually works. So I thank you very much for that. That's why I told you, if you hadn't done this job, you probably wouldn't know what it was. And I thought for sure I knew most all the tools <laughs> in the woods. <laughs> so, so. My pleasure, Joe. Thank you. All right. I hope you enjoyed the video. We shall see, oh, see you next time. And I... And remember, if you have any um, work for Leo to make any of these um, can hooks with the steel handles, um, I will have aluminum. I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you have any work for him to to buy, if they want, if you want to buy a can hook from him, or any other questions, I will leave his email address in the description below. Right. Have a good day.